Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to read this. My friend Pat sent this to me, and I want to spread the warning. This is for everybody in this country. All right. Avoid these foods during the government shutdown. Experts warn. Without much guidance from the FDA, consumers have to take matters into their own hands. December 22nd marked the beginning of a partial government shutdown sparked by a dispute between the president and congressional Democrats over funding for a border wall. As a result, an estimated 800,000 federal workers have gone unpaid. One of the nine affected departments is the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, responsible for making sure the food we eat is safe. Due to the lack of funding, the FDA now lacks the ability to adequately publicize recalls, outbreaks, and other information vital to human health. 2018 was full of major recalls, ranging from romaine and eggs to yogurt and cake mix, all of which were announced by the FDA, and nobody knows when the shutdown will end. So how do we know what's safe to eat? To find out, we spoke to registered dietitian attorney and CEO of teledietitian Jackie Arnett El Nahar, who specializes in weight loss and disease prevention management and reversal. Until the FDA is able to monitor recalls and products more effectively, he says, it's important to stay clear of raw foods and processed meats. Now, she also said, to avoid romaine lettuce and sprouts such as alfalfa and broccoli. Wow. These vegetables are susceptible to E. coli. Ground beef should be avoided since it uses the meat of many different animals. Opt for bigger pieces of meat that are less likely to be contaminated, such as a steak. It is also very important to eat less raw vegetables at this time and to cook more. Cooking food thoroughly at 165 degrees Fahrenheit can kill E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. Before the shutdown began, the FDA was posting multiple food recalls and other various safety bulletins per day. Some people in the department are still working, albeit without pay, on high-risk items. Even so, one expert worries inspectors' minds might not be in the right place. Whoa. All these people are professionals and are certainly doing their jobs, but if they're also worried about who's going to pay for their kids' dental appointments or soccer stuff, or even food or rent. Their focus is not where you want it to be. Renowned foodborne illness lawyer Bill Marler told the Daily Mail over the phone, the FDA is underfunded and understaffed with respect to inspect before furloughing people. They don't get as many high-risk factories and processing groups as they should anyway. So to cut back even more certainly raises enormous concerns. Marla, who's been litigating food poisoning cases since 1993, echoes El Nahar's assertion on which foods to avoid and offer a few other recommendations. Avoid any foods a consumer can cook, he said, or any ready-to-eat products that likely contain pathogens like cheese, deli meats, leafy greens, or sprouts. Anything that doesn't have a kill step involved, avoid it until the shutdown is over. The Daily Meal has reached out to the FDA for comment. On Friday afternoon, the head of the FDA addressed some of the concerns about the food supply. One additional suggestion that we have is to follow your supermarket or grocery store on social media. This way, if the grocer 
proactively issues a recall not announced by the FDA, as Kroger did on January 10th, you'll have a better chance. Truth be told, watching what you eat is one way to ensure the safety of you and your family at this time. Take it a step further with these tips for avoiding food poisoning. Food poisoning could be painful, exhausting, and honestly disgusting. The worst part about food poisoning is that once you get it, there's not much you can do for hours or days or however long it takes for the offending morsel to leave your system. You, you, you're out of commission. Sipping electrolytes on your couch with a bucket in hand. Wow. <laughs> food poisoning is a blanket term for any form of illness that results from eating expired or contaminated food. Food can become contaminated with bacteria such as E. coli, viruses such as hepatitis, and even some forms of parasites. Symptoms vary, but common experiences include fever, aches, pains, vomiting, and frequent trips to the bathroom. Some extreme cases of food poisoning can result in a hospital visit or even death. But these cases often involve other interfering factors such as an already poor state of health or effects of dehydration. If you do get food poisoning, it's crucial to stay hydrated. Other tactics for surviving the onslaught of illness include eating simple, unseasoned, staple foods such as bread, rice, and avoiding substances like dairy, caffeine, and alcohol. You should also take care to eat slowly so you can gauge your stomach's reaction to the food before it's too late, though you can't guarantee you'll avoid it entirely. Food poisoning is somewhat preventable. Even these simple tips to avoid food poisoning as best as you can. Always wash your hands. This one this one is obvious. You should always wash your hands before eating or preparing food. So that's the warning. And one thing that the Lord had me do one time when I got food poisoning from eating bad meat, my stomach was doubled over, I mean for hours. And when I prayed and asked God, should I go to the doctor? What should I do? He literally led me to go in my cabinet and and drink or uh, mix some fiber. I had some Shackley fiber and I mixed it with some water, drank that down. And within 10 minutes, my stomach stopped hurting. And of course, my body was able to eliminate it. But that was the end of the problem. So that's another counteraction you can try. If somebody complains of an upset stomach, take some fiber and drink it down. It will coat your stomach. Well, it did mine anyway. Well, I hope that helps. Wow. We have no idea what kind of a crisis all of this is going to create, do we? But God is still in control. Remember that.